There's a lot of ways to build desktop apps. And on today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Sam Bazu will share his thoughts and help make sense of all of the options. Hi, and welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, filling in for Leslie this week. And I'm very excited to have as my guest today, Mr. Sam Bazu. Hey, Sam. Hello, sir. Sam is a uh, developer advocate at Progress and also is half of the answer to a trivia question, which is, who are the only two people who never worked at Microsoft to host a Visual Studio Toolbox episode? <laughs> Oh, that's that's very true. The answer uh, is Sam Bazu and Ed Charbonneau. Yeah, I I, I love the uh, Channel Nine Studios. I love being there, and we are missing out, but uh, hopefully someday. Some yeah, someday. Until we'll then, about, we are at least online. We get to hang out. Exactly. And today we're going to talk about desktop development. Now, you know, we've heard for years and years and years that the desktop's going away, but somehow it never does go away. It's still here, and there's a lot of options. And in only 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to review kind of the choices and the options, and you're going to give us your take on it. I know there was a .NET Conf focus on Windows about a week or so ago, but uh, I thought maybe you could give us just your kind of high-level overview of what's going on in desktop development and what are all the options and what should people do and think about doing. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a fun time actually. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's uh, bring up my desktop so we could uh, talk through some of the options here. So first up, like we we're talking about hitting the desktop as a .NET yeah. developer. Uh, I mean, there are other ways, other things you can do, um, but um, to me, right now, like um, this is a lot of flexibility. But I also understand why it brings a little bit of confusion because uh, we developers love a lot of choices until we have too much of choice and then we're a little yeah. crippled and we second guess ourselves. Uh, so the good news is everything you know and love, uh, it's gonna stay the same. And then you can learn new things as you uh, target newer things. Uh, like you said, uh, Robert, like desktop powers so many enterprise workflows, it's not gonna go away anywhere. We are just making the story better. So uh, let's talk about Windows. How can you build Windows desktop apps? And there's a lot. Uh, the traditional ones, those are still there and running strong. So Windows Forms, that's probably about uh, 17 years old now, going strong, mm -hmm. very, very productive. WPF, probably about 15. Uh, and again, uh, super rich uh, XAML C Sharp based uh, uh, code bases that you have and the ecosystem and the tooling, all of the, both of those things are so strong. And um, they don't need to be like the old school, like 10 year old uh, WPF or WinForms app. They could look modern, fresh, and they run on uh, .NET Framework full, which is where they have always done, but you can run them on .NET Core, you can run them on uh, .NET 5 and moving forward .NET 6. There are some uh, .NET upgrade assistants that are in the works so you can bring your older uh, applications to the modern world and kind of utilize all of the APIs and all of the beautiful new UI that you have. So all of that is here to stay. Universal Windows platform, that is another way for you to build uh, desktop apps, and that's not, again, going anywhere. But this reaches to HoloLens and, and Surface Hub and all of the other Windows uh, devices. Uh, and then, um, again, I mean, some of it is uh, confusing. I can see that because, again, the same term has been kind of interchangeably used. So we also have Windows UI, which is uh, very exciting. Win UI 2 was a different thing. It was a UI stack just for UWP. But Win UI 3, which is actually at the time of uh, we are speaking here, uh, it's still in preview. It's meant to come out by the end of March in 2021 and then kind of flourish and go GA after that. Uh, that is kind of a whole UI stack that actually uh, promises to run on both Win32, uh, so .NET runtimes and .NET 5 and 6, uh, but also UWP, which is .NET native. So uh, you got best, best of both worlds. Uh, you can bring in C Sharp, you can bring in C++. So that's all the Windows and uh, XAML you story. You can also bring in the Uno platform and go cross-platform. You could, yeah. You, if you wanted to take the yep. Windows XAML, if you are really tied to it, then uh, yeah, Uno platform is your choice. But uh, let, let's hold on to the cross-platform story because I think uh, that is getting a lot more love this year, in particular with Maui. Uh, but just to kind of wrap up, like the, some of the other choices you have, because again, as a developer working on an enterprise, you're likely not just building one thing, right? So I always say, take a look around as to what else are you building, where can you share code. 
What else is your team comfortable doing? So if you're into web stuff, you should be uh, looking at web stuff. Uh, you can build progressive web apps, which are essentially web applications, and then you can install them on a desktop. And you don't get quite all, all of the features. You are still within the browser sandbox, but it is a start. Uh, and then um, Electron is uh, also a very good option. And it's been battle tested. It's been around for a while. If you look at some of the major applications like you know, you know Teams and VS Code and yep. you know Slack and Figma, all of those are essentially web apps running beautifully on desktop. Uh, and that's through Electron. It gives you that shell. And it gives you some deep OS integrations. Now, um, if you did not need all of that, uh, what you can get away with uh, and what Electron makes you do is bundle in Node.js, the runtime, and Chromium, uh, the browser engine, with it. Mm -hmm. So your app always has the confidence knowing exactly what it's running on. If you didn't need that, maybe you can get away uh, without doing it. So that's where some of the other newer options are coming in. If you still wanted to do uh, Xamarin, or uh, XAML, essentially, but you are not so tied to the Windows XAML, then Xamarin Forms has always been an option. Uh, you could reach UWP with Xamarin Forms. You could reach uh, WPF apps with Xamarin Forms, because essentially you're rendering native UI from uh, a Xamarin Forms uh, UI stack. But the two nearest things that I'm actually personally most excited about are uh, what's called Blazor on Desktop or and then .NET MAUI. So uh, to, uh, to your point, um, uh, Robert, so uh, Blazor gets a lot of love. And uh, again, uh, you can build web applications that are now running on desktop, but not through the Electron shell. We are using uh, the most modern web views in every platform. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's WebView 2 on Windows, and then uh, WK um, Web Browser on uh, on Mac. Uh, so you're essentially spinning up uh, a Blazor application just like it will run on the web, except now it's within a Windows shell. And then .NET MAUI, that is your cross-platform story. So uh, Uno Platform is great for what it does, but if you uh, want to have all the confidence of .NET backing you to go confidently to Windows and Mac and iOS and Android, then .NET MAUI is the story, uh, which is, again, still very early days. We are uh, at preview one right now. Right. In November 2021, you will have uh, have that fully baked in. Uh, and essentially, it uh, it goes to Windows through WinUI. So you are absolutely native on Windows. Um, so I think it's it's just a lot of choice. So, so is uh, it, would you say it's true that there's still basically uh, two ways you can approach the desktop. One is, um, you know, you, you're doing WinForms or, you know, some variant of XAML, whether yeah. it's WPF or it's UWP or it's WinUI or it's Xamarin Forms. You know, it's four different types of XAML, but XAML is XAML. If you know one, exactly. you can write the other, right? Exactly. Uh, well you know, said. XAML, XAML, you know, everything you need to know to do WPF or UWP, WinUI, or Xamarin Forms, right? And then, mm -hmm. yes, if you are only on WinForms, you got to learn XAML, but you know, you got to learn something sometime. Right. Um, yeah. Or you come at it from the standpoint of you do web. web, web so now you've yep. got progressive web apps, Electron, uh, Node.js, or Blazor, mm -hmm. primarily aimed at web folks. Um, is that a true statement? It is absolutely true. Okay. So essentially, like, pick your poison. Do you want to yeah. do web stuff or do you want to do .NET and, and XAML stuff? And either way, you're going to be fine. Right. And that's, that's a good, happy story. So me, I've, I've been traditionally a desktop developer. I, of course, have dabbled in web stuff, mostly for demos. But I don't really know the web stuff all that well. Um, I know the desktop stuff. And I've done every desktop since before <laughs> WinForms was invented, because I'm that old. Um, but I can build awesome applications. I can build cross-platform applications. I can do pretty much anything I want to do building on the same skill set that I've had all along. And then similarly, if you're a web developer, um, there's all kinds of new things you can do, including Blazor that leverage the skill set you've always had. So you don't have to, as a desktop developer, learn web stuff to be current. Yeah, exactly. And if yeah, you're a choose, web guy, you don't have to learn that web desktop web. stuff to be current. Yeah, so exactly. It's still, and it's still true. Yeah, very much. So the, the web guys, like, and it's not just Blazor, like maybe you're coming from a completely different JavaScript background, uh, Angular, Re, Vue, React, like all of the spy applications, they're all welcome. They will run just fine. Uh, and, and again, uh, so far, what we have talked to is just the Windows, which is majority of desktop apps, at least from our .NET ecosystem. But if you want to bring up my screen one more time, like 
there are others, right? So you can actually very easily reach Mac OS now uh, and yeah. Linux, like for the hardcore folks who run Linux mm -hmm. as their desktop. Uh, this is all .NET as well, and this is all web as well. If you want to do web, Electron is welcome. Uh, if you want to do uh, XAML and C Sharp, then uh, Xamarin.Mac has always been there. You also have some Mac OS renderers that sit on top of Xamarin Forms, which is essentially what Blazor Mobile Bindings is doing right now. But eventually, they will uh, sit on top of .NET MAUI. And one other thing that uh, they're talking about opening up is um, .NET MAUI, but through Mac Catalyst, which is yep. essentially Apple's way of running iPad apps on the desktop, because Apple has a similar problem. They, they don't have a lot of folks wanting to build for the Mac desktop. So they're wanting to get iOS apps to run on desktop. So uh, probably another way for Dr. Maui to kind of help out. And again, uh, if you're running on Linux, then you do have renderers again. Um, mm -hmm. So I think um, as a dotnet developer like this gives me a little bit of joy that my code just goes to so many places and, and like you said like you pick whether you want to do web stuff or you want to do dotnet yeah it's it's interesting that you know th that we still make the distinction between desktop and web and mobile when if you think about it it's just apps right i mean every there there's apps they have a ui and they talk to some data somewhere and there's code that links the two up. And then you have various screen factors, whether it's your Surface machine or your Mac or your phone or your other phone or someone else's phone or your iPad. I mean, I've got, you know, Windows and iPhone and iPod and iPad and an Android. I've got those all in the house and I want the, I want the apps to run on everything because if I'm sitting here on my phone, I want to be able to call up the app. And, you know, right now this is an Android phone, but I, I'm thinking of switching over to an iPhone as my primary phone. But it's still my phone. It's still a computer. It should still run apps, right? Yeah, no. so, Absolutely right. And and so most of what you're saying um, we can do right now. I mean, apps are apps. And yeah. you can put things in a shell. You can run it on desktop. You can put things in WebAssembly, run it on, on, on a browser. Uh, I think where you see some of the edge cases is what exactly is your app doing? If you are really into uh, some of the touch features, you might want to uh, choose something that's a modern platform that runs as touch on touch friendly devices or as mouse and uh, uh, like a keyboard on, on desktop? Uh, or do you need like a very fast uh, rendering engine for a modern browser? You might want to uh, get a new web view. But if you think, Robert, about uh, some of the really intense desktop applications like uh, graphics applications, yeah. those are actually a little intensive on, sure. on your CPU and GPU. They're very busy in terms of the UI. Some mm -hmm. of that is still a little hard to do on the web. Uh, it's not undoable, but it just takes a lot more work. So I think desktop is here to stay. Uh, I mean, an enterprise line of business apps will always uh, power workflows through desktop. Yep, totally. Definitely here to stay. But the more you can let me expand the types of apps I build without having to throw out stuff I already know or or learn something. Now, of course, I'm always interested in learning something new, but I got a lot of years and a lot of us have a lot of years and experience and knowledge in yeah. building desktop apps. I don't want to start from scratch and, you know, become a rookie web developer when I am an experience, I won't call myself an expert, but an experience, um, you know, in the stuff I already know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is the good news, right? Your expertise, your investment, your knowledge doesn't go away. Um, right. you, you need to be open to a little bit of evolving of your knowledge of uh, to target some new frameworks. But uh, like you said, like if you do XAML, like as a developer, like I, I get the annoyances that XAML dialects are different, but like how difficult is this? It's just pure XAML and maybe some namespaces yeah. are different, maybe some things are called differently, but the XAML code base is a XAML code base with C Sharp. Um, so uh, I'm yeah, glad. Think, to about, see think about all the I think about all the people that learned C sharp, right? Like I was a VB guy, and then I learned C sharp. I learned C sharp. I can learn XAML. I can learn a different XAML dialect, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you learn an entirely new programming language, then learning XAML, which if you know, particularly if you know HTML or played around with HTML, because they're both MLs, they're both markup languages, they both essentially do the same thing. And then if you know one variant of XAML, you can pretty easily move over to the next one. It's not exactly. that hard. And again, if you have your fundamentals in place, like if you, uh, a lot of like XAML and C-sharp based code bases use like MVVM design pattern, which is a design pattern, it's got nothing to do with the specific framework. You learn one, 
and you're good to go. You can switch around with other things. You can um, have the sanity that you want in your code bases. Right. Um, so obviously, uh, some of these are, are getting more uh, than others. Where do you, or, or how do I want to put this? Um, let's switch over. Some of these things are new, like Blazor, for example. Um, you know, give us a, an overview of its evolution in the past year or so and, and where you see it going and what types of scenarios it's going to be optimized for. Yeah, so Blazor understandably is very exciting. If you're a .NET developer doing any type of uh, web stuff, Blazor is super exciting because you are either server-side Blazor uh, enabling line of business applications over a signal or a bridge, or you are truly client side with WebAssembly running everything in the browser. So it's obviously exciting. And the Blazor ecosystem is pretty rich. You have um, folks like us uh, building Telerik UI for Blazor. Uh, there is a lot of help with UI and tools and ecosystem. It's, it's very rich. And we can bring all of that knowledge and all of the folks who do web stuff into other things. Because uh, we, we talked about desktop today. It's not just desktop. But we can also run Blazor apps on, on mobile as well. And uh, I, I see this uh, as an exciting opportunity. And like folks on the Blazor team and Dotman teams are obviously excited about this because it uh, enables uh, all of that Blazor code, uh, the C Sharp and the Razor syntax to ju now just suddenly run very nicely, very smoothly on desktop and mobile. And we, we can also mix and match. You can also render native stuff with some web stuff. So it doesn't need to be completely a hybrid app that is just running web. You can mix and match. And so where do you see it a year from now? All right, so I would say a year from now, Blazor is going strong on the web, but the desktop model has been a lot more flushed out and we are able to go um, past some of the wrinkles. Performance is solid. And the, the thing we, we don't always talk about, some of the pain points are on the edges, right? So if you are running a Blazor app on desktop, um, where is your JavaScript bridge or your interop? Because what if you brought in um, something where uh, uh, where you have some JavaScript? Maybe it's a web app that you're bringing it in, and you want to enable that on desktop. So where is your JavaScript bridge? Uh, is the runtime optimized to uh, do touch over that uh, web browser, uh, the web view? So there, there are some nuances that need to be flushed out, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's exciting. So a year from now, I want to see Blazor uh, fully working and being super performant on desktop and mobile. And then uh, last question, what about in the XAML space? Is WinUI the one XAML that rules them all? Uh, that's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the team is hoping to do. But uh -huh. again, the reality is like there are too many enterprise apps that are still being built on uh, WPF. And again, there's nothing wrong with WPF. There's nothing wrong with Xamarin Forms either. So I think if you want to, like my two cents, if you want to stick to Windows with XAML, pick either WinUI or WPF. You're going to be fine either way, mm -hmm. right? If you want to go cross-platform, look at .NET MAUI. And then is that XAML, Xamarin Forms? Is that yes, UI? Xamarin Forms. Yeah. Xamarin yeah. Forms. Okay. But Again, that's just one slice because .NET and Maui wants to open it up to other things as well. Essentially, right. Blazor running on desktop or mobile mm -hmm. is essentially running on .NET and Maui. There is an yep. MVU C# -sharp pattern that is also welcome to build apps. So .NET and Maui is not just C# -sharp and XAML, but if you are doing C# -sharp and XAML, it is Xamarin form XAML. All right, cool. I th I mean, we did it. Less than twenty minutes. We summed up the wonderful world of desktop development. Yeah, I think it's exciting. <laughs> It is. And of course, as you mentioned before, there's still the rich third party ecosystem, uh, the control vendors, you guys, the others, um, lots of good uh, opportunity for people to build modern and very exciting apps. Yeah, absolutely. Look around is, is what I always say. Look around into, uh, before we start a Greenfield project, look around in, into what else are you doing? How can you mm -hmm. code share? And always look around to make sure you have the right tools, the right UI, you're choosing the right ecosystem. And then once you've made the decision, go all in. Uh, the good news is the tools are so good on almost every stack that you are set up for success. All right. All right. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing your thoughts with us, Sam. Appreciate it. Thanks for yeah. having me. Hope you guys all enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.